Good evening and welcome back to our uh, online uh, Wednesday night core group. Uh, we uh, began last uh, Wednesday night talking about uh, this season of uh, Thanksgiving and I hope that you've been enjoying the uh, daily scripture readings. If you haven't uh, been uh, participating in those, uh, we will uh, once again this evening send you the link for that so that you can uh, participate in the, this next week's daily scripture readings and encourage you to uh, get involved in the dialogue. If something jumps out at you, uh, feel free to share that in the, uh, in the discussion format of the uh, YouVersion Bible app as we're sharing together. Want to uh, lift up uh, several needs in prayer this evening. I uh, want to encourage you that you can, uh, even though we're using the uh, YouTube version uh, from here on out, you still can be involved in chat. Uh, it does require you to have uh, an account with YouTube, it's simple just to set up your name and, and email address uh, and uh, sign up for an account uh, so that you can, uh, so you can be involved in some of the discussion here and uh, feel free to do that and get, uh, get signed up so that you can uh, interact with us. Um, <clears throat> but want to uh, have you share in the uh, in the chat below any uh, questions that uh, you might have in regards to uh, the study that we're doing any prayer requests that you might have that we might join with you in prayer and especially any answers to prayer that we could uh, share and celebrate with you about what god is doing in our lives and in our midst I want to uh, uh, be mindful of uh, some prayer requests that are before us that uh, we would ask that you would uh, uh, join us in prayer. Continue to remember uh, those that had surgery last week. So we had uh, Domingo Montalvo with uh, hand surgery and he's recovering well. Uh, James uh, Baker had surgery and he is uh, recovering as well. Uh, ask for his continued prayer in, in uh, his recovery process. And then also uh, asking that, uh, that you would uh, pray for uh, um, Denise Morgan who had hip replacement surgery and uh, she is recovering as well. Uh, so I uh, ask that you would just continue to uh, uh, lift them up in your, in your prayers and uh, ask that God would uh, work in, in their behalf uh, for these situations and circumstances. Continue to remember Carol Nix uh, in the Continuing Care Hospital with this uh, blood infection and recuperation. Robert Hubbard is doing better, uh, still recovering from uh, uh, COVID and uh, much better. Continue to uh, remember uh, Brenda Carey. She was able to go home, and we thank God for that. And uh, then ask a special, special prayer for uh, Myrna Paulson. Uh, we got word uh, yesterday that Myrna was uh, taken to the hospital, and uh, she does have uh, COVID, and they're keeping her in the hospital. So uh, pray for uh, uh, Pastor uh, Elwin and uh, Myrna during these days that God would... Uh, would help them in these situations and circumstances. Let's pray together this evening. Father, thank you for this amazing day that you've given to us. Thank you for this beautiful weather. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Oh God, we are just truly grateful for all the things that you have done for us and so many things that uh, we can give thanks. I pray, God, that as we, uh, as we focus in this evening on your word, uh, that you would speak to us, that you would uh, reach down out of heaven and, and uh, meet us at a very point of need, and that you would help us in everything that is said and done. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, in Christ's name, amen. So we began uh, last week uh, looking at uh, several passages of scripture, um, talking about uh, this season of, of thanksgiving. Uh, we've talked about before in the past, and, and uh, no doubt you've you've heard me share uh, uh, some of the uh, the concepts of of thanks living, a lifestyle of of giving thanks. Uh, but uh, I was uh, I was doing a little bit of uh, research as we were thinking about this evening's uh, lesson, and. Uh, was thinking about uh, the, the number of passages of Scripture that, that challenge us, uh, that encourage us and, and challenge us specifically 
uh, to give thanks in all situations. It's easy. Uh, it's easy. I, I will admit, we all know that it's easy to give thanks when things are good, when things are working out uh, the way that we want them to, when things are going uh, the way that, uh, that we had hoped that they would. Uh, but time and time again, the scripture challenges us, this, this idea of giving thanks in all circumstances. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verses 18 through 20, give us some, some, some challenges on this. And, and at the end of that, that section, it says, Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. Not just good times, not just when things are working out the way that we want them to, but always and in, and in all things and in all situations that, that we could and, and should give thanks. Uh, again, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 or 7 says, Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Uh, then over in Colossians, the second chapter, it says, uh, verse 6, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. And then uh, again, um, one more out of Colossians, the... Uh, uh, the uh, third chapter, the 15th verse said, Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So again, these, these passages of Scripture, and time and time again, the, the, the Scripture challenges us that we should give thanks at all times, in all situations, in all circumstances, and in every season of life, we should give thanks. We need to become a, a thankful people. Uh, now I'm speaking to myself as well as, as there are times in which uh, there's lots of things that, that I'm not thankful for. And, and there's lots of times when it's not easy to be, uh, to be thankful for some of the challenges, some of the heartaches, some of the, the difficulties that, that we face in life. But time and time again, God's Word, God says to us that He calls us to a lifestyle of giving thanks. There is always something that, that we can be thankful for. It kind of comes back to that, that old analogy of, of the, the glass being half empty or, or half full. Uh, this bottle of water is, is nearly empty. But I can be thankful that, uh, that there is still some left. I can bemoan the fact that it's almost all gone and and uh, I'm really thirsty, and, and that's not going to be enough. Or I can be thankful for the fact that, uh, that there is still a, a drink or two of water left here in this, in this bottle that, that I will not go completely parched and, and uh, won't dry out. And it just reiterates the fact that in, in life circumstances, we face many situations and circumstances that are not easy to be thankful for. Uh, nobody really gets excited for, for broken bones or, or stubbed toes or, or hurt feelings or, or painful situations. Except that when we look to the reality that God is working out, the scripture says, all things, all things. I have this song that, that's been running through my, my mind this morning. It simply says that, that that God took what the enemy meant for evil and turned it for my good. You took, O oh God, what the enemy meant for evil and turned it for my good. It's reminiscent of, of the, the story of Joseph who, who was uh, sold into slavery by his brothers who 
considered killing him and, and uh, instead sold him into slavery and, and uh, went to Egypt and was there sold as a slave in Potiphar's house and, and uh, was excelling in his, in his work uh, as a servant, as a slave in Potiphar's house and, and then accused of, of wrongdoing when, when he did nothing wrong. And, and then imprisoned for his actions. And, and then again, uh, coming out of that, that, that situation, raising up in the ranks within the prison, being a trusted member of the, of the, prison, uh, of the prisoners, and, and then being placed in the position of, of second in command of all of Egypt. And, and when his brothers came to him and, and, uh, and they realized what they had done, he said, what you meant for evil... God meant for good. God took that situation. He turned it around and he, he made good come out of it. And, and he sent Joseph ahead to prepare the way for his family and to provide for them in the midst of, of that drought that was, that was there. Could God have worked it out another way? Absolutely. Did, did this have to be the only way that it, that it could have worked? Absolutely not. God, God is God and He could do it any way he, he sees fit. But yet He took what the brothers meant for evil and turned it for their good, for Joseph's good and for the good of their family. And so in all things, the Scripture challenges us that we can be thankful. We can be thankful that God is at work, that God is still on the throne, uh, that nothing happens outside of His will and His way. And there's nothing that He can't redeem. I love that word, and, and I, I, know, I know you do as well. It's, it's a part of, of this, this Thanksgiving season. It's a part of the Christmas season that we're coming into. This, this idea that, uh, that uh, God is a redeeming God. And, and not only does He redeem us, not only is His, His grace, His redeeming grace for our salvation that, that saved us from, from our sins and redeems us, but He is a redeeming God that, that can redeem uh, difficult situations and circumstances. He can redeem whatever we're facing, whatever we're going through. If we will allow Him, if, if people will allow Him, God will work out all things. For our good. The problem is, is, is when we when we get sidetracked and we we lose sight of God's redeeming grace. We lose sight of the fact that God can redeem anyone. That God can redeem any situation. That we lose sight of the fact that God is a redeeming God of redeeming grace that can work out all things. That, that's the only way that we can, we can give thanks in all circumstances is if we, if we refuse to lose sight of the redeeming grace of God. So that means when things are bad, when our country is in a, a difficult situation with regards to the pandemic and... and uh, and other situations in our, in our economy and in our community. That means that in the midst of all of these things that God is still on the throne. That nothing catches Him by surprise. And that in that we can be thankful even for the small things that He has provided. We can be thankful for the fact that we're still alive, that we have these moments and times together. We can be thankful that though uh, things don't look like they once did, uh, they're not worse than they are. Though things may not work out the way that we want them to, uh, we can be thankful that God still works all things, all things for our good and for His glory. A couple more verses that reiterate this truth. Colossians, the fourth chapter this time, the second verse, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Uh, so devoting ourselves to, to thanksgiving and prayer of thanksgiving. 
1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the 28th and 29th verses. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. Again, what we are receiving from God is is more than we could imagine. So, So let's be thankful and worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. Then Hebrews, the 13th chapter, says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of the lips that profess, openly profess His name. And do not forget to do good and share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Turn with me in your Bibles to the 145th Psalm and the 18th verse. I'd love for you to highlight this or, or, or focus in on this because I, I believe it, it, it sums up all that we've been talking about this evening. Psalm 145, verse 18. It says, When the peace of Christ rules in your hearts, thankfulness overflows. Even in the darkest of times, we can praise God for His love, His sovereignty, and His promise to be near us when we call. Even in the darkest of times, even in the most difficult of situations and circumstances, here are, here are three things that you can praise God for. Number one, His love. Number two, His sovereignty, that He is in control of all things. And number three, His promise to be near us when we call. The first part of that verse says that when the peace of God rules in our hearts, it's the ruling factor, it's the deciding factor, is, is not my thoughts, not my anxieties, not my concerns, not my worries, not my fears, but when the peace of God rules in my heart, thankfulness overflows. Maybe we would understand this to, to, to mean that the, truth, the opposite is also true. That when anxiety or fear rules in our heart, worry is the overflowing factor. Fear is the overflowing result. Bitterness is the overflowing result of anxiety or worry or fear being a part of of who we are. But when the peace of Christ rules in our hearts, thanksgiving just flows from who we are. It just pours out of of our lives. It just just oozes out of our pores. It just oozes out of of the very fabric of our lives and everything that we say and we do because the peace of Christ rules in our hearts. How can we allow the peace of Christ to rule in our hearts? How can thankfulness just overflow from our very essence and our very being? It's that when we praise God for His love, we praise God for His sovereignty, and we call out to Him in prayer. You, you'll notice that several of these scriptures that, that I read to you um, this evening uh, revert back to prayer, prayers of thanksgiving and calling on the name of God and uh, worshiping and, and praising God. So praise and prayer of God for His love, His sovereignty, and the promise that He will be near when we call. So we never get sidetracked from the fact that that God is for us. He is good. He loves us. And He's for us. And He's going to take even the things that the enemy meant for evil and work them for our good, for your good, for His glory. I want to just take a a couple of moments, and and, uh, if you would, you could uh, interact uh, on the chat below. But I just want us to to take a few moments to to share some things that we're thankful for. 
just as the music is played up on the in the background and, and uh, this uh, thought is is placed on the on the screen for the next two minutes would you just answer this question what am i thankful for if you need to get out a piece of paper make a list write all the things that uh, that you're thankful for if you would just get on the the chat bar below and and, uh, and write out all the things that you're thankful for and and rehearse that list and and look over that list and add to that list on a on a daily basis maybe this this thanksgiving season you you need to come up with one thing every day that you're thankful for and focus on that and that you thank god for in the midst of this season and at the end of this two minutes we'll come back and close out in prayer together So many wonderful things that we can and should be thankful for. Let's just give God praise together in thanksgiving. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you, O oh God, for your sovereignty. Thank you, O oh God, that you are near when we call. We give you praise and glory and adoration for our families, for our church, for our country, our community, our world, for salvation, for your word. It's alive and active. Thank you, O oh God, for this beautiful creation that we enjoy on a daily basis. Thank you, O oh God, for life and life abundantly. I pray, God, that you'd help us to, to experience life to the full. Thank you, God, for this time together. Thank you for technology in which we can share even in uh, socially distant times. Thank you, O oh God, for, for your continued grace and mercy. Thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross for, for us, for me, O oh God. Thank you for your, your grace and your forgiveness. Thank you for your redeeming grace, how you turn any situation, any circumstance into good for, for your glory and for our good, O oh God. We, we thank you that you're a redeeming, grace-filled God. Thank you, O oh God, for for each and every one that has, has joined us here this evening on this, on this online uh, forum to, to share together and, and learn together and study together. Thank you, O oh God, for uh, the, the truth of your word that, that is alive and sharper than a double-edged sword and that cuts to the heart and meets us right where we're at to, and in our, in our point of situation and circumstance. Thank you, O oh God, for all that you continue to do and all that you continue to work out and in our lives. Thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy and your love. We just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the matchless mighty name of Jesus. And all of God's people said, Amen. 
Hey, looking forward to uh, gathering this weekend. We have a special surprise uh, this weekend, and that is that the, the International Church has uh, put together, the Board of General Superintendents put together an international Thanksgiving service. One of, the, one of the neat things that has come out of this is some opportunities for us to, to share in some uh, online forums and online video formats that, that we've not been able to do before. Uh, we've had to do them because of this season, and, and uh, uh, the General Church has put together an international Thanksgiving service that we will be sharing together this coming Sunday and, and be a part of a, a live stream from, from all over the world, Nazarenes all over the world, singing and praising God together from, again, all over the world. So we look forward to that. We will also be sharing in our, in our annual Thanksgiving meal uh, if you have not signed up for that, we definitely need you to sign up for that. You can go to our online uh, link at templefirst.com uh, backslash signups, and there's a, there's a hyphen between the word signups. So uh, just go to uh, templefirst.com and you can find the link for signups and sign up for our, our annual Thanksgiving meal. That will be shared out in the gym after the morning service as well as uh, if you would like to uh, share that Thanksgiving meal but would not be able to attend in person but want to just drive by and, and pick up a meal. We'll have some go to-go meals prepared. So when you sign up, uh, would you please let us know whether you will, uh, if you will be uh, driving by to pick up a meal. If you don't say anything, we'll assume that you're going to be here in person if you've already signed up and, and uh, did not indicate that, would you just let the office know and, and uh, we'll make sure that we have that food prepared and uh, you should be able to, to swing by. Probably about, uh, about 12.20, uh, 12.30 to uh, pick up your to-go meals. That'll give you time to finish the worship service and uh, then uh, anytime 12.15, between 12.15 and 12.30, uh, come by the church and, uh, and pick up those meals. Uh, you could just drive by the gym and honk and somebody will come out and bring those out to you or, or text one of us and let us know that you're there to pick up your meal and we'll make sure that we get that coordinated. Looking forward to, uh, to worshiping with you this weekend and worshiping with the, the International Church of the Nazarene from all over the world. It's going to be a great Sunday and uh, we are looking forward to that. Uh, next, uh, next Saturday, I believe it's the uh, 28th, uh, we're doing a special event, uh, kind of an outreach event that we're participating in, uh, putting uh, wreaths, Christmas wreaths on the uh, uh, grave markers of the vet Veterans uh, Cemetery, and uh, we would love for some of you to be a part of that, come out and help us with that. There uh, should be some information on the screen there that you can look at. If you have any questions, you can contact uh, Greg Arts about that. That's not this coming Saturday, but the next Saturday um, after Thanksgiving. So uh, just a couple of announcements there to uh, be informed about. And we look forward to seeing you this weekend, either online or in person. God bless.